so hello everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, let me just do something here. Okay. So thank you for being here. Um, I'm the first to be speaking today after two Oracle masters sharing a lot of secrets about new stuff going on with Oracle. So what I'm going to, sh to share about today is not exactly new stuff. Some are quite, quite new, but we are going to see uh, a little bit about PL SQL best practices. Um, so th this is basically things that are already in place and I have seen that not everyone is using. So I just believe this is uh, really nice uh, for us to speak a little bit about it. Uh, this is a topic that no, not always is, is being covered as, as good as, as well as it should. So if you are a DBA, welcome and thank you for being here. Uh, and for, you know, sometimes be out of your comfort, uh, comfort zone to learn something different. And if you are, are a developer, thank you very much for being here and uh, try to uh, learn something to help uh, your DBAs to help you out. So I believe this is a session for everybody. Uh, so let's go to it, right? Uh, first, uh, the important things about me, let's say, is basically my communication channels in the social uh, networks. The ones that I have is basically Twitter and LinkedIn. Here's my care code for the LinkedIn, so feel free to reach me out. Uh, I'm an Oracle East director. Uh, possibly you know me because of my blog, report.com. I have founded that several years ago, and right now we have 15 authors worth, uh, writing there. So I'm pretty sure that there is something that is uh, under your interest. We have not only uh, Oracle databases, but also Golden Gate, Apex, uh, Java coding, um, Fusion Midler, and so on, right? And I'm also keeping the QR code here. Uh, there was there was some some room <laughs> on this background for me to put the QR code for Grepora, right? Uh, I'm part of the Oracle User Group Consular, um, and I'm also Vice Director, uh, Vice Coordinator on the local state Oracle user group uh, here in Brazil. Uh, and yes, I'm speaking from Brazil, so I'm kind of home here in Latin America. Uh, where in Brazil, and this is a slide that I like to share uh, when I, I'm out home speaking, I live in the southeast state in Brazil, uh, which is called Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, I live in the capital, uh, Porto Alegre, uh, which is the fifth uh, biggest capital in Brazil. So this is something that is more interesting than <laughs> the usual uh, connecting stuff. Um, and something that is kind of fun and people remember me about that is because I have some pets and the names are kind of Oracle related. I even have a cat that is called Oracle. So I'm the one that I can actually yell with Oracle. Uh, even though this one is really nice, nicer than the one that I work with. Uh, and I, it's also a disclaimer because I have two birds, Spark and Solaris, and you may hear the quicking of them because this is the time of the day that they decide to quick all the day long, right? So something else important to mention is that I work for Pekin uh, remotely with Nelson that I was speaking a few minutes ago. Uh, we at Pekin, we work remotely, not only now because uh, of the COVID thing, but we have been working remotely for 20 years. So if you are having any issues or if you see an opportunity for any external advisory in your company, feel free to reach me out uh, offline. I'm sure we can help you out, not only with Oracle, but with Postgres, MySQL, SQL Server, MongoDB, and some, some all related to data, right? And finally, going to the matter of our discussion today. So um, a safe harbor statement first is, uh, this is not a guide to teach you uh, code PL SQL. I'm pretty sure that everybody that is here has at least some notion on what we are talking about. So the things that I, I try to do here, uh, and I will try to go over, this is the first time that I'm going with this presentation, uh, <clears throat> is basically I completed 15 things that I, I believe uh, it would be nice for you to know that exist and it would be nice for you to use in your daily basis, right? If you leave the session and decide to use at least two or three, I will be more than happy, okay? So first thing is, in general, PL SQL developers have some drama, right? Because PL SQL is not that good and so on. And uh, if we 
if you code Java, you know that you can import a lot, a lot of libraries and you can basically copy everything and don't type anything. Um, but the thing is, uh, Piao SQL is actually pretty fun and pretty nice. And we, had a, we have a lot of tools. It's much a matter of use tools properly, which is, this guy is not really doing. But the thing is, uh, we have tools, right? And this is what we are going to go over today. But first, uh, something that I, I would like to share is about my understanding on resolving any sort of problem, uh, especially when related to code, right? Um, so there are three main things that I believe are really important. Uh, information about the problem, uh, understanding about the, the business and the environment and the things that are related to the problem, and be able to raise options with this, right? So what sort of information? Uh, the structure of data or indexes, what, uh, what is taking more time, uh, and this is specifically when it's related to performance issues, right? How long is this taking? Uh, what has changed, not only on the code, but also on the environment itself? Um, how many buffer gets, explain plan for the queries, uh, the row counts estimated versus uh, real, and so on, right? Uh, different problems require different information. Uh, on the understanding part of things, uh, it's basically how much you understand about the, the, the code and the environment that you are working on. Basically, how indexes works, uh, the difference between, between single and multi-block reading, uh, how stats impact in your plans, uh, a little bit about dynamic SQL and so on, right? And for the options, what Oracle can do for me, what alternatives Oracle provide me for the specific problem that I'm facing, uh, what can I change in my code to improve that? And here come several tricks that basically you learn with time, right, working with this. So regarding understanding specifically is much more about knowledge. It's very hard for me to, to, to cover in a 45 minute session all that you need to know regarding the theory of databases, right? Uh, and regarding the options, basically it comes with experience and some sort of information, some imagination at some point, right? Uh, but the thing that we can actually discuss is information because this is much more related to instrumentation of your code. And this is the thing that if you think about it before starting everything, uh, this can help you a lot in the future, right? So this is what we are going to discuss about. Uh, let's start uh, with a simple case for us to illustrate and maybe become it a little bit um, practical, right? So let's say that anybody reaches you saying, hey, this processing is very slow. What do we do? What, what's next? How can we address that? As a DBA, uh, we usually, well, give me the trace and let me see what, what I can do, right? Let's say that after some work, because you know tracing is not that, that simple to analyze, you come with a table like this. Uh, well, my, my processing have like uh, seven steps. Uh, I have the timing for the steps and the steps that manage with, that handle with data. I have the amount of data that is being consumed, right? So looking into this table, answer to yourself, because we are remote. Which is the line that you believe is the problem? What is the process that seems to be the problematic one? I guess most of you should have uh, answered that it's the step number four, right? It's the one taking more time. Mm, maybe. The thing is, uh, we are only looking into the trace with the problematic routine, so we don't have anything to compare. Let's say, for example, that you have a past execution of this, a record for a past, a, a successful, a good execution of this process, right? You can see that actually the step that uh, may have, may be causing the problem is the step number three, right? This is something that you um, somehow would be reaching in at any point during the investigation. But if you have any historical execution, this would allow you to identify much, much, much faster, right? Because the thing is, uh, the pre-process is not a problem. It's just taking more time because you have gathered more data, right? Something has changed in the step number three, why you are taking more data. And this is the thing that you actually need to understand, right? So this was a simple case just to 
I illustrate uh, a problem, right? Where uh, having some instrumentation on the code would help you out. Uh, keep in mind that Oracle is great by default. So we have a lot of tools. We have AWR, we have Azure Reports, we have ADDM Reports, OS Watcher. Um, we have a lot of things, right? Uh, and this is sometimes is uh, what makes SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres guys a little bit envy because Oracle is great on this regard. But you can do it better and uh, we can make it especially better for your coding. And this is what I believe we should be doing on the on the PL SQL um, development um, process, right? Uh, so first, let's let's talk a little bit about when you are starting to code something or even maintenance and, and fixing any code, right? That somebody else has wrote. Uh, and this is something that um, I believe it's the most common thing, right? Fixing something that somebody else did. Uh, there are a few things that can help you out and let's start with the tips finally. <laughs> So first one is uh, set the PL SQL warnings when compiling. Uh, this is not something to show the world that your code is terrible. It's actually something that can help you out during the compiling of your code in the testing or development environment because this is something that you should enable on session level for you to know when compiling, right? And what this, uh, is this checking for? Uh, basically for uh, when others that know uh, and please don't do that. This is <laughs> this hides exceptions, and this is really really bad. So please avoid doing that. And the uh, warnings will detect if this is happening. Uh, string overflows, unreachable parts of codes, unnecessary assignments, uh, functions that doesn't return any value, and this sort of things. Right. So the PL SQL warnings are basically something that may help you to anticipate problems for for, for the other. Uh, steps of the de development, like the, the unit testing and so on, right? Quick example on that. Um, let's say that you enable that and you compile the, the, this procedure of code. Uh, after uh, showing the errors, basically you see, well, there is something on my conditions that are making part of this uh, unreachable, right? So this is something that in general lines will not be shown to you, but if you have this in place, this may help, this may help you out on identifying a uh, problematic part of codes, right? Uh, but let's say that you want to ignore this specific one and you want to, to be notified about the other ones. Uh, this is all um, possible to be uh, set up, right? Uh, we can disable some specific warnings, if you will. Nice. I really like that one. Um, number two, a very similar one, PL SQL settings when compiling. The thing with this one is basically, and I even changed a little bit the code to, to, to add some uh, additional reference uh, on the parameter two. I included the employee last name type uh, just for uh, make the next slide a little bit uh, interesting. Um, but the thing is, we can track down all the identifiers uh, in your code. And sometimes this is really ha helpful for us to have like a pseudo code and analyze what we have in place, right? For example, by setting that and running this uh, very simple query uh, on PL's, uh, PLC scope hierarchy, right? Uh, we may have something like this. And you can see that we have all the definitions, declarations, and references of um, identifiers that I have in my code. Uh, for example, I have the name of the procedure, and even and for each parameter, I have the declaration. Uh, when I set any value to that, and when I use it is as a reference on any condition or something. So if you look into that uh, after type your code, this is probably something that uh, you are familiar to but may help may uh, help you out on identifying uh, why some vari variables are getting the wrong numbers at some, po at some point of the code or things like that, right? So it's a very useful tool to have handy in case you will. Uh, and yes, here we have the parameter two. Uh, declaration is a reference for the table employee and a reference for the column last name, 
right? So just to, to give you an example of that. Awesome. Something else about the PL uh, SQL settings when compiling is uh, basically uh, it, with that you can even see when you have, uh, as you saw in the query before, we have the declaration, we have the references, uh, but we can see whenever we have a, 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 a variable that perhaps is never used on my code based on that information, of course, right? So have a look on those two variables, the C not used and the local variable, which is actually used in the first condition, in the first if condition, um, but it's never uh, been assigned to a value, right? Don't look into the query. This is a, a little bit more complex and I believe Oracle should make it a little bit better for us. But at least with this, we can see the unused variables and have something like this, right? So this variable is declarated but never used. And the next one uh, is referenced on the, on the line five but has never been initialized. Uh, initialized. Right, so this is something that may be interesting to have like a sanity test after your coding. You can do these sort of things if you have the PL SQL settings uh, enabled, and this may be interesting for you. Nice. So extra thing on the same topic, so 2.5, let's say. Uh, after 12.2, we can uh, include also statements like commit, rollback, checkpoint, and basically uh, we can see in which line we are doing by procedure. So uh, maybe this help us, uh, may help us out on the same way that the previous slides show, right? Awesome. Tip number three, um, use conditional compilations, right? For different uh, versions, like version-based code. Um, let me give you an example about this. So. I had a client uh, that uh, used log miner on their coding, um, and you you see that some log mining features were disabled or were decommissioned on 12.2 and uh, are not available anymore. Uh, the continuous mine is not available on 19C. But the thing that replaces that was uh, introduced on 12.1. Uh, so the thing is. Uh, let's say that you are a software house uh, developer, right? Uh, and you are developing a PL SQL code to be used by your clients. You may have clients on 11G. You may have, may have clients on 19C. So how do you do to accommodate both of the clients if the 11G doesn't have the fix yet and the 19C doesn't have the old version yet uh, anymore, right? Uh, instead of building two different applications or two versions of the PL SQL, you can basically use this condition now um, uh, compilation to set up the version of the database you have. So if the version of the database is 10.1 on this example, the following part of the, the code is going to be executed and you can do like ifs for different versions and have only one um, procedure or packaging for all the versions. And of course, this should be tested, but ideally when the client migrates from one version to another, this should be transparent for your code because you already coded the new version. So you can make a, an application that works for everything, right? In a very um, modern fashion and well, well organized, right? I pretty much like that one. Uh, and in advance, we're going to talk a little bit more about this in the next slides. Uh, you can also use conditional comp uh, compilations for enabling some debugging or tracing in your code uh, by using the PL SQL CC flags uh, during the compilation uh, in your environment, right? Uh, simple example of that is um, you can say that you are compiling in the bug mode equal, equals to true and the trace level is to 10. Uh, you can even set up different trace levels for your own coding. And inside the code of the procedure, uh, you may set uh, like we have here, right? So if the, uh, we are in debug mode and, we, and, and the trace level is higher than five, then do something, right? You can do things specifically for debugging, things specifically for trace level. And the thing is, if you do not have this set at the point of compilation, this is not going to be compiled, right? Because something important is, 
uh, DBMS output is, is rubbish, right? It takes a long time uh, and we are going to talk a little bit more about it, but uh, it has a lot of problems and you, you don't want to have this in your production code, right? Uh, but when development is it, very uh, used, very used even though it shouldn't be, but uh, I see that everybody kind of use the DBMS output to see some things when compiling. So on this way, you can at least hide out this from the production compilation of your code and from, from the, the production deployment, let's say. Okay, so be aware of that. And uh, again, this is what everybody does. And myself, mea culpa, I do that sometimes. Uh, like printing here, here too, and so on in my in my code in my screen when I'm executing the procedures that I create. But we shouldn't do that first because again, uh, the PMS output is rubbish. Uh, also because when you go to production, most likely you will remove all the DBMS outputs uh, from the code. Uh, if not, you may face performance issues on your code. Uh, but if you remove, you do not have any information anymore about the execution. And even if you leave the code there, uh, you cannot see the screen. So it's pointless anyway, unless you are putting that in a code in, in some sort of log file in the application. So uh, it's, it's a nightmare and it is low, right? We are going to see how much is low is this. What are the alternatives? Basically, either asking for the application uh, team to provide you the log file for the application if you have. Um, the problems are, well, access is required, so we need to ask somebody else for that. Uh, usually the traces are unstructured, like uh, it's a pain to process and to compare, and either it's uh, too long, uh, so it's hard to, to dig in, or it's too short in a way that it doesn't have the information that you need. So it's really hard to find the best position in there, right? Uh, and standards are poor or non, non-existent at all. Uh, it's brilliant if you want to practice your SAD or AWK or shell scripting skills, but it's not the ideal for resolving any problem. And the other alternative is uh, asking for the Oracle traces for the DBAs. And if you are a developer um, and you know how to use trace parsing very well, congratulations. But this is not uh, the, usual, the usual thing. So uh, usually the DBAs needs to parse the trace and still there is a lot of uh, detailed and highly verbose information. Let me see, if, okay. Uh, and still it's a little bit of a pain to, to work on this, right? Um, so how to make it better? First things first, and here's, here comes the tip number four. So uh, please try to use the BMS application info. Uh, this is a very interesting um, method or procedure that we have in Oracle and allows you to set uh, your location in the application with three methods. First is module, uh, then action and action and client info. My recommendation is uh, use module for uh, like the main module of the application, like the package name or something like this, before any validations, then we already know where you are. Uh, for the action, use significant part of the codes. Avoid putting on every single step of things that you are doing, like don't overdo it. Uh, use like uh, the module for reports and the action like for one specific report, let's say. Uh, and the client info, for relevant info that may help you out. Like I started this at that point, something like this. We are going to see examples on the next slide, which is this one. So uh, on the first example, we are setting the module of the application and the action name, like the module is sales load and the action name is validate all prices, right? In the second example, uh, we are just setting a new action name with, inside the same module, we, which we were already set, right? Something is important, and this is why I, I leave this, uh, this example here, is uh, please unset the module and the action when you finish your code, because you, you don't want to take responsibility of bad, bad codings for other guy, from other guys. So please unset that uh, after your part of coding. And the last one is setting client info. So enter it at this model at this point of time. 
right? So these sort of things may help you out on identifying and specifically may help the DBA to understand what's going on, right? Where the code is, which is a problematic code, where is the bad SQL that is in locking, which part of the, the application is this happening, right? And not only that, we have several additional things that we can do once this is properly set. For example, setting trace, tracing properly. Let's say that you have an application with a connection pool, right? 200 connections from each application server. This, is, this means a lot of sessions for us to enable the trace on all the sessions. And even harder to, to parse all those traces and identify what is important for you. But if you have the module and action name properly set, we can even enable the trace as the first line example on your screen. Uh, we can enable the trace for that specific part of the code. And with the TRC uh, sesh, which, which is something that you already have in your Oracle Home, we can merge all the sessions on this action and this module in one single output file, right? So if you set that, this will help a lot the DBA to help you out, right, developer? <laughs> so be aware of that, right? Uh, some plus is the one that tip number four. Uh, there is some uh, really interesting library for uh, Oracle tracing that were developed by the method R uh, developers. It's available here. Uh, and also some, something that may be interesting for you is to, uh, you can read the module in action that you are. Okay. Awesome. Okay, Mateus, now my code is very dirty. <laughs> it's, it's ugly to see, right? Let's see an example of that. So let's see that I have a DBMS output or anything else that's control, not exactly the function that my code is supposed to do. So uh, the bold parts are the parts that I'm basically putting on the screen and the code is what is in between, right? So it's pretty ugly. And for this, I have the tip number five. So use wrapper packages for your own control. Uh, and some extra bust on this is use the built-in uh, built packages rapid as well. Uh, for example, uh, that situation with the log miner, the client had to change the code in several parts of their packages. But if they had the built-in package by Oracle uh, rapid in one single point of the code and calling this procedure or this function uh, from the other parts, this would be uh, way easier uh, and effortless to fix. Uh, the thing is, for the built-in packages, uh, it's up to Oracle. It, do it doesn't depend on us to fix. So if Oracle decides to put another parameter on the BMS output, for example, this will break a lot of codes. But if you have this rapid, uh, I understand this is an effort before starting coding, but afterwards, th this may uh, worth it, right? So this is a quick tip. And something else is uh, explicitly put the schema like sys before the built-in packages. This is a security uh, measure because uh, you know uh, the, the easiest way to make you with your privileges uh, run some malicious code in the database is creating another package and uh, repointing the public synonyms uh, for that one. So if you specify the, the schema, this is not going to change. And in case this change and you have the rapid things, it's only one place to change, right? So please do that, okay? Uh, a quick example on this. Uh, so we have this procedure put line uh, and I even putting a suffix like the timestamp of the message before. And on my code, the bold parts below, it's way better than it was before, right? So use it. Still, Mateus, I have no clue on what's going on in my code. Uh, I'm just putting on, on, the, on the screen. And as you said, we don't have that. And as you said, the DMS output is rubbish. So let's see further. Uh, yeah, it's low, right? Uh, how, how is low is that? So uh, using the same example, we have uh, the, the put line being used three times in the beginning and the end. And one time in the middle, it's inside a loop that executes like 60,000 times, right? Without 
Without this line, like commenting the line with these calls, it runs in 0.21 seconds. But if we are writing that to the screen, it takes almost 15 seconds. So this is how slow it is, right? So it, it's kind of a nightmare. So avoid using that and use log tables instead, right? This is the tip number six. Uh, we already spoke that this is rubbish. I really hate it and because I, I always forget to set up the server output. And when I set it, uh, then I see that the buffer is not large enough. And uh, something is that if it's running somewhere else and writing to a log, you need to wait the code finish to then see the things we cannot see in the time that the things are happening. And also it uses memory, right? It uses memory from your session. Even though, uh, even if you uh, haven't the server output set, if you have any code in production that is deployed with server output, this is consuming time and this is using memory from your session. So avoid it uh, as possible, as much as possible. To work around it, here's a quick example of a simple table that you can use, use for all your code, all your application. And with this, uh, you can have an output like this, right? So the process name, the time that it started, and uh, we can even set some uh, log level, if you will, uh, and uh, for you know instrument, instrumenting your code, and the message where like I started at this time, we, I did some things, I did some intermediate commits on my routine, and it ended at that point, right? So this is really nice, and this is something that you can see while the the thing is running. If right, you can connect on the database, you start the, the, the application, the, the procedure, and start monitoring on the table and see what's going on at, at each point of time, right? So please use that. Nice, Mateo. So now it's very organized. My code is awesome, but it's still slow. And slow on which direction? Well, let's say that I have a financial application and I have some sort of timing restrictions to perform the actions. Uh, and well, I'm inserting logs into tables within my business uh, actions, right? So this may be costing something to my application, right? And uh, it's even dangerous because if I'm committing something to my log table, I may be committing the application things as well, right? So here comes a tip number seven, use Pragma Autonomous Transaction. And what does that mean? It means that uh, everything after this will be done in a separate, in an independent transaction. It will not affect the main part of the code. So if you have your code for the application business stuff and you want to log, start a parallel uh, session, let's say. It's not a session, but a parallel transaction for this. And with this, you can even commit as you are see seeing on the screen. So it's not only a tip, but a requirement to avoid affecting your production code, right? And with this, you kind of doesn't have any uh, restriction on the timing. So for example, uh, and this is an example of use of that, uh, in the right log procedure, you can open a Pragma transaction and insert to your table, but also if you want, uh, and if you have, and this is a hidden tip as well, uh, you can have a my log level parameter in your uh, application code. And with this, you can uh, even print screen things if you want, right, uh, during the execution. So uh, for this parameter, for example, this may have a default value in your main application, like zero, uh, but when you, decide to run that on a debug level, you can set up this in the call of the procedure. So you can, without changing any code in production, you can uh, set the different uh, log level for your execution, your testing execution, right? Awesome. Let's move on to the next one because we're running out of time and we are in number eight already, uh, yet, right? So uh, I'm not going to cover that one uh, exactly, it's just a tip. Uh, for error handling, please use the built-ins uh, SQL code and SQL error message uh, in our exception sections. Uh, but also be aware we have some other interesting and fancy stuff that can give you a call stack like this. And Stephen uh, Feuerstein has a pretty nice article showing some examples about this in Oracle Magazine. Here is the link. The slides will be available afterwards, so feel free to go there. Awesome. So, Mateus, you are going 
just to talk a little bit about logging and that's it, right? So we spoke a lot about logging uh, and the reason for that is basically, uh, as I said before, instrumentation is the key, right? Uh, one coding, the, the rest of the things I cannot teach you, but I can at least give you some hints on how you can add some instrumentation to your code in order to help yourself in the future and help the DBA to help you out, right? Awesome. Uh, but we have some other things, some general things that I'd like to mention um, and I believe are very, very important. Uh, the first one is uh, regarding uh, set out ID, always, right? Irrespective of the default uh, configuration for this. Uh, this basically is used to establish the privilege that is used to execute any procedure. Uh, so let's say that you have this procedure like give a raise to somebody. Uh, and you use AltID uh, definer, right? The AltID definer means that the privilege, the privileges that are going to be used are the ones that uh, owns the package or the procedure. So probably this is compiled in the application schema, which has the tables. Uh, so if any user in your database has an execute any procedure privileges, he can go and execute and give himself a raise, right? Uh, however, if you have AltID current user, even if this DBA has executed any procedure uh, and calls this procedure, uh, he will not have privileges to update the tables, right? With the, the, the salary tables, let's say. So this is some sort of way to prevent any um, security glitch in your application, right? Awesome, so please use that. Um, number 10, uh, use table aliases. This is very simple, but this is, okay. This is very simple, but this is uh, very important, right? Because uh, as I mentioned before, I'm pretty sure that you are mostly fixing code written by other guys instead of writing your own code. So if you are using uh, aliases, it prevents some ambiguity and it makes a lot easier to read uh, the codes that were written by by others and for yourself in the future probably this is going to be good because I, I always forget what I wrote in the past. So this is really important and use unique analysis please uh, and as complete as possible don't use this example that I'm showing the screen. Uh, use like meaningful uh, analysis to clarify that. Right. Number 11, use references to data types. This is really important because uh, column size is changes uh, with the time, on the time. And link amendments are the most frequent changes that we have on the columns. Um, for example, if you have hard coded the, see the example, the poor example uh, in the slide. Uh, you have the V username, which is a variable that you know that's going to be used for the username column in the user's table. And you set that to virtual uh, 30. In the future, is mm, let's say that we change the size of this column for any specific case. You need to um, fix up all your code, and this is this can be a nightmare to use a better wording that is on the slide. Um, but instead, if you have like the good example uh, users dot uh, column percent type, this can be uh, much much more flexible, uh, and your code will fix by itself. Um, when the, the column gets uh, the size increases, right? So please use that. Number 12, I avoid select star. So uh, I'm even, I'm skipping the, the, the obvious things like use identification and so on because I know that you know that. Uh, but I need to mention this one because uh, I see so many cases where we have a select star into variables the, the the hard thing on this is if you have any additional uh, column added to the table or if you have any change on the order of columns this can mess up and jeopardize your whole coding and uh, i'm especially keeping that here because i'm just hoping that we have somebody at all from oracle watching this session and uh, I had this situation in, with uh, Oracle Statistics. Oracle has changed the order of columns in one view and we had a bug because I see that Oracle itself is using select star into variables. So please avoid doing that. Uh, specify the number of columns, the name of the columns, like the good example below, 
And even if we have any new table, uh, any new column being added to the user's table, uh, this is going to be transparent, right? This is not going to affect your code. Uh, let me see. I see we have a lot of questions, but I'm going to cover that later. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, something else, 13, we are almost there. Uh, avoid SQL inside the loop, right? So uh, I understand sometimes it's just easier to do on this way. And again, we could have a whole presentation just about loops, about improving the PL SQL for loops. Uh, but I'm just going to the general case and the thing that I, I see more frequently. So let's say, see, see this is an example, please. You, first we are getting all from the department and then there we are adding some filter to do some counting, right? I understand this is the easiest way to do. But the thing is, uh, we are first uh, bringing more data for my application, for my session when running that. And also, um, we are uh, changing the context between the PL SQL and the SQL several times. So this is not good, good for Oracle. How should I do that then, Mateus? Please try to bring all the complexity to your loop query, right? So you see that the query seems like a little bit more complex on this way. But the thing is, you just need to think that once in, in the life, right? When you are writing the code. Uh, but if you do that on the laziest way, Oracle, you are lazy only one time, but Oracle is going to execute that thousands of times. So please don't be lazy. <laughs> Think about it and write the best coding, right? Uh, and then you can just uh, keep on the loop only the things that are, are really required to be inside the loop. Okay. Awesome. Uh, tip uh, number 14. So allow Oracle uh, to use the PL SQL optimizer level, right? The default is two. And what does that mean? Uh, it means that Oracle basically, uh, Oracle, the Oracle compiler optimizer basically tries to do is um, copy and paste part of your codes to make like inline in functions instead of have different calls everywhere in the code, right? Even though the cost of this is low, there's, there is still some cost about it, about that, about calling different PL SQLs inside the code. So if Oracle has the, the the capability on putting things together and make like a procedural code, it's way better performance wise. And the next speaker that we have, um, uh, Tim Ho on his blog, has some really nice articles about that. So have a look on there. And they are usually more interesting than the Oracle documentation itself. Um, so he has some good documentation about it. Uh, and Oracle has some very nice documents showing the performance changes of that as well, right? Awesome. Uh, last tip, uh, but not really, really the last because we have some bonus thing later on. Um, but the last tip is use native compilation for an extra bust, right? Uh, it has uh, some, because you know, PL SQL is an interpreted language. So by default, it's compiled by the PL SQL comp compiler. Uh, but we can, uh, with this comment that you are seeing on screen, after sessions at PL uh, SQL code type as native, we can ask Oracle basically to compile that on machine code, which is C language, uh, and it give you, gives you some extra boost on the performance. The thing is, it has some restrictions. The restrictions has been have been resolving on a long time. For example, it, had, it was not recommended for RAC up to 10G, but then after 11G, this was fixed. Uh, so still, before doing that, go there and check about the restrictions. Uh, and something else to be aware is um, it doesn't improve your SQL. So if your SQL is a shit, <laughs> it is not going to fix anything, right? Uh, this is only going to improve the PL SQL part, right? So be aware of that. And again, don't be lazy one, uh, when uh, typing, when uh, preparing the SQLs for your procedure, okay? Cool. Uh, some Extra tip, um, it's the PL SQL profiler, uh, pr profiler. Let's say that you don't have any instrumentation on your code and you are seeing some problem on production right now, today. Uh, what you can do is basically you can download that from our support, it's a tool. Uh, we install that on the database. Uh, you start the profiler, run your, your uh, procedure. 
and then extract a report. It's going to generate an HTML report like this that you are seeing. And you are going to see some really nice stuff. I'm just finishing just for you. Um, and it, it can show you uh, the, the time in seconds for each line of your code and the times that each line was is executed. So if you don't have any, any, anything else uh, like instrumentation wise, this can be a tip for you. So be aware of that and go to my support and read more about it. For the QA, I believe we still have a few minutes for questions. Uh, but in any case, if you remember anything, um, and also the slides are available at grapora.com here on the care code again. Uh, we have a forum section, go there, leave the question, uh, use the tag LAOC20, and I'm going to answer any questions between today and tomorrow with priority. Uh, but in any, any case, I believe we have some time for Q&A, correct? Yeah, yeah, we have a, a couple of minutes. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but I can read you. Uh, we have a couple of questions in the section questions and answers and also some in the chat. Uh, some, uh, Marcelo is asking about the PL SQL logger packages, uh, such as uh, the one in GitHub uh, or a open source dash logger. Uh, that could be interesting. Uh, if you are used to that, feel free to go ahead. Uh, I believe that uh, it's just interesting to have your own like um, prepare your, your, your own code. It's not that hard, right? You just need a, a procedure to write code, to write things in a table and a table. I don't believe anything fancier than this should be used because in the end of the day, the whole objective is that you are familiar with that and you can quickly uh, dig and go over the, the logs and see what is important for you. So I don't like, uh, Oracle already have a lot of tools. If I have, if I would like to have anything else for myself to improve my control on my code, probably I would like to write something by myself. But it's my opinion, uh, and still we have a lot of uh, of um, different things like this in, in in the internet. And I have uh, showed, for example, for the the BMS info, we have something that was written by the Method R developers. We have other examples. Okay, great. We have Alberto asking if there is any way to identify the kind of code is going to get benefit from the native compilation. Uh, it's a little bit hard to identify that. Um, something that you can do is testing, right? So uh, don't trust on anything that I said today. <laughs> test everything, please. Uh, you can test uh, with the net native and uh, the interpreted um, way and test the, per the performance on, on each one. It usually depends on the case. Oracle says that it can improve from 1.05 to, to four point something, to up to five times the, the, the performance. But again, it depends. The native will only improve the PL SQL part, not the SQL part of your uh, code. So this is something that is it's hard to tell. Uh, the best way is to test. Okay, great. We have a uh, Jose Molina asking, uh, what would you suggest some PL SQL instrumentation tool like Logger, for instance? Uh, where are you seeing that? Uh, In the questions and answers section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. Um, well, as I said before, uh, what I would recommend you is first to use the advanced info uh, to help out on the Oracle supported way the DBA to help you out and tracing and so on. But for instrumenting your own code, uh, again, as the, the same answer as I gave to Marcelo, I would recommend and I prefer to have my own. We have several uh, sort of uh, code in the internet to help you out with this, but I really prefer to have my own because it's simple after all. It's, it's supposed to be simple and it needs to be simple. Okay, great. Uh, another one from Jose Vega asking, which of these recommendations, I bet is the one, all the one, the one that you did, apply to ETL processes, and which one recommends for uh, to use in those cases? Mm, I believe uh, basically all of them uh, applies to ETL processes. Uh, some of them are more sensible to transaction applications, like the Pragma one. It's something that most likely will make more difference on the transaction one. 
uh, but all the things that I'm recommending here are valid uh, either for ETL routines, but also for uh, OLTP, let's say. Okay, great. We have David asking uh, if the recommendations and tools that you mentioned are available in all versions of Oracle. Yes, it's available in all versions. Uh, oh, uh, not all of them. Uh, let's say that if you are in a supported version of Oracle, most of them are available. Uh, if you see the, the, the identifiers one, uh, my slides regarding the statements, this is available only after 12.2. Uh, but all the others are basically available for uh, all the um, supported versions. And the cases where uh, only a few of the supported are, are supported, I uh, are, are have the two. I have explicitly that on the slides, right? So uh, assume that everything is working for all the supported versions according to the Oracle support timeline. Okay, great. And we have the last one, I think, uh, is... Uh, Juliana asking if she can execute the PLS, PSQL profiler for how long if it is consuming resources from the databases? It's a, it's a profiling, right? Uh, so it does re, uh, use some resources from the database, but it's not that much. Uh, my recommendation is if you are able to simulate the thing that is causing problems in your application, take the variable, take the, the parameters for that execution you start a profiler, run the bad thing, and then stop the profiler. If you have a good example, run both and compare the reports. But this should be done like uh, only in, in a session level for the um, parameters that you know that are giving problems for your application. Okay, and that's all. We don't have any more questions. So thank you very much, Mateus, for sharing the time with us today, and everybody who's joining the session too. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, the organization, for the opportunity. It was really nice to me. Reach me out at Grapora, reach me out at LinkedIn and Twitter, and thank you for the opportunity. I hope I have at least shared one thing uh, that may help you in the future. So still here is my, uh, my contacts again. Uh, if you can start using at least one of these two things, uh, two or three things of those in your daily basis, I will be more than happy. Yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you. And remember the participants if that we have a lot of sessions later today and this day, so I remember to show those two. Okay. Yeah, the next one is awesome. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye bye.